Good morning, church. I'm so happy I mowed the lawn yesterday. Anyway, today I want to take you to a passage in the book of Acts. As we continue to make our way kind of through the New Testament, I want to take you to the very beginning of the book of Acts for a lesson that I think is really relevant for us today. It says this, first verse, first chapter. Uh, The writer, Luke, says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, I'm pausing there because for many, many years, I have felt like verse 6 was the disciples just missing the boat entirely all over again. Uh, For many, many years, I thought that uh, verse 6 was the disciples just completely focused on themselves. They couldn't focus on anything else. And so they asked Jesus, now is it time for you to restore the kingdom to Israel and do what the Messiah is supposed to do? And granted, they are missing out on a lot, but I don't fault them as much anymore because there's something very interesting that I never noticed until earlier this year when I was teaching through the book of Acts in our church. Earlier this year, I noticed a tiny little detail that I don't think I had ever really noticed before. But it combines with a couple other things. First of all, did you notice in verse 3 that Jesus, for 40 days, was speaking to these disciples about the kingdom of God? In other words, for 40 days, he is continuing to talk about the kingdom of God. Of course, it would be on the top of their mind. Maybe not the kingdom of God, but at least the word kingdom would be on their minds. So when they say, is it time for you to restore the kingdom to Israel, in their minds, the kingdom of God and the kingdom to Israel are kind of one and the same. Now, they're wrong about that, and they should have known better, I think. But still, Jesus is talking to them about the kingdom, which means he's giving them a lot of hints, a lot of clues. But beyond that, in the book of Luke, and in fact, Matthew and Mark as well, Jesus had something before he was crucified that would have also convinced them that the kingdom was about ready to come. Let me show you. In the book of Luke, it says this, chapter 22, verse 18, Jesus is passing out the communion elements to his disciples at the Last Supper. And he says this, For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Here Jesus has said to them, the kingdom of God will come, and when it comes, then I will drink of the fruit of the vine again with you. So Jesus has clearly said, one of these days, I'm going to drink this wine again, but I'm not going to do it now. But did you notice that Jesus gave many convincing proofs that he was alive back in the book of Acts chapter 1 that we saw? And one of those many convincing proofs is that They were eating together, and in fact, the passage said while they were eating dinner, Jesus talked to them about the kingdom of God. Okay, so maybe Jesus was eating, but he wasn't drinking anything. Uh, Maybe he was drinking water, which of course we know from history was not the healthiest thing for people to drink back then. But maybe Jesus was making some kind of point, and he's saying, I'm going to drink water, but I'm not going to drink the fruit of the vine. Um, Or maybe we just recognize that any time the people back then got together to eat, they would also drink. And any time they drank, they would also drink, it was mostly wine. Uh, I think it's a good conclusion that Jesus was eating and drinking with them. In fact, one of the reasons why I think it's a good conclusion is that Peter himself says so. In Acts chapter 10, verse 41, Peter is trying to defend this message of Jesus as he's describing it to Cornelius and his family. He says, Jesus was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate 
and drank with him after he rose from the dead. In other words, Jesus said, I will not eat, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until my father's kingdom come comes, until the kingdom of God comes. Then he is resurrected and he eats with them and he drinks with them. Of course the disciples are going to be thinking to themselves, it's the time for the kingdom right now. Now is the time for the kingdom. Uh, let's go back to how Jesus answers their question give you some context again. It says again in verse 4, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Here is their confusion. Jesus is clearly indicating that the kingdom of God has come. He's already drinking with them. Jesus has said the kingdom of God is here, basically. There's just one problem. They don't see the kingdom, and so they ask about the kingdom. Because there are two things going on here. One is that Jesus is telling them they need to wait for something. And simultaneously, Jesus is proving that the waiting is over. Their question is, are you now going to restore the kingdom to Israel? See, there's a part of their mindset that always believed the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Israel were one and the same. And there's a part of them that always believed that in order for the Messiah to be God's king, the Messiah also had to be Israel's king. But remember, Jesus never talks about the kingdom of Israel. He only ever talks about the kingdom of God. Let's see what Jesus has to say in response. Verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's as if Jesus blows off the entire question about the kingdom of Israel. Sometimes people interpret this to say Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority for the rest restoration of the kingdom to Israel. But Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus blows off the Israel part of the question completely. Instead, he just says, it's not for you to know times or dates, but you will receive power. Jesus is basically saying, hey, listen, I'm not going to give you the details about Israel. We're not even going to talk about that. I'm not even going to give you the dates of how long you're going to have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. I'm just telling you it's going to come. Wait in Jerusalem. And then after that, you will be my witnesses. And there's still no mention about the kingdom of Israel. But keep reading because what happens next is amazing. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Jesus, you're the Messiah. You just came back to life, and now you've gone? Now you've left again? And we have to wait again. Verse 10, they were looking up intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. In other words, stop standing around and waiting and start getting to the purposeful waiting that Jesus told you to do. See, this waiting of you just staring into the sky is unproductive. Jesus told you to wait in Jerusalem. So go back to Jerusalem and start your productive waiting. Verse 12, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath's day walk from the city. I don't know if Luke intended this to mention the Sabbath day's walk. I mean, Luke wasn't a Jew, and so the knowledge of Sabbath being a, a, a normal unit of measurement wouldn't have been normal for Luke. There's a reason he mentioned Sabbath. Maybe it's that Sabbath has always been a symbol of rest. Rest and waiting. 
Here's the interesting thing, I think, for you and for me. We hate waiting. We hate being patient. And so sometimes we look at the passages in the Bible that indicate that the the presence of the kingdom of God is already here. Obviously, what Jesus is doing there by drinking and eating with the disciples is he's saying the kingdom of God has arrived. In some way, the kingdom of God has fully arrived. And they can now celebrate that. And Jesus is alive with them. And he's eating and he's drinking with them. And the kingdom of God has come. And so, of course, they ask the question, since the kingdom of God has come, are you also going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Israel. And Jesus says, I'm not even going to talk about Israel. What I'm going to talk about is you, your relationship with me, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, and your relationship to the rest of the world. You are going to bring the kingdom of God to the whole world. And we don't even get to talk about the time when God restores a physical kingdom on this earth, whatever that looks like. And so he says, wait for the spirit. And then he levitates away. And then the angel says, wait but not here, wait in Jerusalem. And then they walk back to Jerusalem, metaphorically, in an attitude of rest and waiting. Listen, right now, you are probably going through a time of patience. You are probably going through a time of waiting. And there's probably a large portion of the people who are out there right now thinking to themselves, how much longer is all this going to last? This week, states are reopening. They're trying to get business back going. And and I think a lot of that is just simply based on impatience. It's not necessarily based on the wisest course of action from a health perspective. Maybe it is based on the wisest course of action from an economics perspective. I, I don't even know. All I know is we're impatient people. We can't stand waiting. And maybe you're in that place too. And I want to let you know, Jesus has never been afraid of waiting. I don't know exactly why God does this. I don't know why he makes us wait so often. But I do happen to know that one of the major signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life is patience, love, joy, peace, Patience. From Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit. If I'm impatient, I'm not living the life of the Spirit. If I am living the life of the Spirit, patience will rise up in me. There's a place in all of our lives, I think, where Jesus is calling us to patience. And you and I will tend to do a couple different things. Question number one, we'll say to Jesus, when, 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 when? And he'll say, stop asking the question. Times and dates aren't for your understanding. Or maybe we'll do the second thing where we will do absolutely nothing productive and we'll just wait and we'll be like, Jesus, 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 come back. Is it coming? Are you, are you coming back now? When, when, when are you coming back? And I think there is a place in our patience where Jesus wants us to experience Sabbath. He wants us to experience rest. Anticipation is good, sure. Hope is good, sure. But there's a place for Sabbath. I don't know how you're experiencing this time of waiting and patience right now, but I encourage you to embrace it as a time of Sabbath, a time of rest. A time where you say, Jesus, I'm in the waiting right now, and so I'll take advantage of this. Listen, I don't know what patience means for you today, but I encourage you to experience it not as stress, not as anxiety, not as unrest, not as staring up into the sky, and not as demanding questions get answered from Jesus. Instead, Go on a walk, just a Sabbath day's walk from wherever you were back to Jerusalem where you'll wait for God to reveal himself. Take advantage of the moment of patience to reconnect with your God who loves you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, would you just be with us? Give us by your Spirit's presence patience in our lives and help us 
to rest in the knowledge that the kingdom has come, even though there's a whole lot left still to be done. Thank you so much. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a Sabbath restful day. Have a patient day and have a productive day. God bless you.